Good morning, everyone. It's Karen from Fox in the Garden. Today is my favorite day of the year. It's garden planning day. I'm gonna run through about five steps with you that I generally take when planning my garden. And I just wanna say that planning a garden is not about creating a plan that you're necessarily gonna follow through from A to Z. You are probably going to just create a big picture right now at least this is how it works for me. I create a big picture and then I try to get there. It doesn't always work. Things are always going to change. So really the goal of today and the goal of garden planning is to give you a ball to move forward with. It gives you a goal at least. It gives you some direction to get the ball moving if that makes sense. So your end product is not always what you started with, but it gets you there, right? It gets you to something. So I say this because every year I plan a nice garden out and it never ends up where I want it to be because things change in our lives, right? Our money might change, our time and availability might change. It's a whole year process. So um, while it seems overwhelming, in the end, we shouldn't get too hung up on the details. We should just bend and flex and go with the flow and just make something happen, right? So this is the starting point, the starting action, the starting assessment of what we're gonna do for the year. So one of the first and most important things to do is figure out what the heck you actually eat and want to grow. Because you don't wanna grow things that you obviously aren't going to eat or maybe you don't know how to fix or that you care about that much. So sit down, take a moment to think about the things that you actually eat and buy from the grocery store. And then think about, you know, if you feel that that's feasible for you to grow. So really just start with a big list and you can always weed that out later. So I got myself a basic list of all the things I generally eat and maybe a few just because I've been gardening for a while that I learned to eat um, basically from gardening. So, but for if you're just starting, it might be a good idea just to stick with the things that you know you're gonna eat and then once you've figured the gardening world out a little bit and you feel a little more confident and want to explore and have space for it, you can start experimenting with other things. Another thing I might do too is I try to grow varieties that maybe I don't necessarily find in the store, especially with my tomatoes. I like to grow a bunch of different kinds of tomatoes. I... Tomatoes can have a lot of beauty to them. There's like some really dark purple ones and there's yellow and just different colors and varieties and it's just really cool to see. And then also it just provides that much more color profile to your diet, which is always a good thing. Eat the rainbow, right? So there's your first step in planning your garden out. So the second step to planning your garden is assessing your resources. You want to assess how much money, time, and labor opportunity you have. So think about it. For me personally, I it is just me doing this garden. There is nobody else helping me. So everything I do, I need to be able to do myself, which means I need to think about my time, the amount of time I have available to do it. And am I going to be able to take care of this garden? How much of my time am I willing to dedicate to it? And then third is money. How much money do I have to put towards this? Do I need to be, should I be leaning towards getting scraps and you know spending money on like one item and trying to scavenge and make better do with something else? So those are all things to think about. And really you would be thinking about these things sort of throughout your whole planning process because a lot of the things that we're doing and we're planning can be done cheaply or they can be done more expensively. But I think for the most part, the thing that you're gonna spend the most money on is always gonna be your soil because your soil is the biggest investment you have in your plants. So if you spend good money on good soil, then you are more likely to have a better crop. So that really should be your goal and where your money goes. And then from there, you can figure it out. Third thing to think about is the method you are going to use for your gardening. As you may or may not know, there are a freaking ton of different methods of gardening these days. So most traditionally people think, or the traditional method is to take tiller out, till some rows, 
throw some amendment in, plant your plants, etc. People have used herbicides and pesticides in the past to manage their gardens. Are you going to do that? Or do you want to do an organic garden? Do you want to do a no-till garden? Do you want to do raised beds? All of these things are going to be different. What are your goals in your gardening? For me, my goal, one, is an organic garden. I do not want to use herbicides and pesticides. They are terrible for soil health and terrible for our e ecological health and for our health. Uh, to those who do it, you know, we all have our ways, but personally for me, I find this to be the healthiest and best method. Um, it requires more effort, um, but I don't mind making that effort up um, because on the other end of the spectrum, those herbicides, pesticides, those types of things are more expensive. So, you know, to each their own, but that is my choice is an organic garden. My second choice is going to be a no dig garden this year. I have never done a no dig garden. I sort of like had to spontaneously throw in some no dig beds that I probably didn't do right because I had a lack of time. Um, but I'm gonna try to do it the right way. <laughs> I guess the right way, if there's a right way in gardening um, this year. So in my plans, I'm choosing no dig because, and these are my goals. So because one, it costs less. So if you think about doing a raised bed, it's, you have to buy the bed itself and then you throw the dirt in, you gotta amend the dirt, you gotta add ways to retain moisture, et cetera, et cetera. So with the no dig part, I like the fact that it's in contact with the ground and that it's sort of more part of the ecosystem than a raised bed, just a little bit. Now there's nothing wrong with raised beds either. Um, the no dig method it's just a very good way of like maintaining the ecological health of the soil um, for the, just for the better health of the soil. And it's just cheaper. I mean, if you, all you do is you put cardboard down and then to kind of kill off the weeds, you put layers of cardboard down and then you put the dirt on top and it sounds a lot cheaper. I'm sure I'm going to do more research this year. I haven't done a ton of research into it, but um, in the end, it just ends up being a little cheaper. So I'm going no dig this year. So you gotta make that decision. Do you wanna spend the money on some raised beds, which is great, or do you want to maybe do an in-ground garden, et cetera, et cetera. You get to make that choice for you. And that will help in the next step. So the fourth step is planning out your garden space. Do you actually have a space in your yard that you're gonna use? How big is it? And do you have any predators? Do you need to put a fence up? Um, these are the basic things we need to think about because I know in my garden, for instance, we have a ton of deer and if I don't put that big giant fence up around it, then we're, it's a no-go. They're all gonna get eaten. And I learned that quickly this year. So that last year we had, once upon a time, I had a garden about nice square postage stamp size. And this year they have to put in a little like rain garden thing that takes out a part of it. So I've essentially had to stop using the two raised beds I had right here and go adjust my plants to a garden that was like this size. So I took all the dirt out of these raised beds, put them over here in these beds, and you had to use my containers. I had to use all kinds of things. Completely threw my plants off. Um, this year while they were putting in the rain garden, they opened up the fence and they ate everything. Thankfully it was the end of the season, but that is a really good indicator. You might need to think about predators in your garden and how to keep them out. So some things you can do if you have bird, bird pests is like netting. Are you going to need some netting? Are you going to need um, a fence? Are you going to need, maybe you have like things that dig, do you have mole issues, etc. So some things to think about. So this is my garden. Uh, because of construction, it's essentially had to become a rectangle size. And this is how I've planned it out. So you don't have to get crazy fancy. You can just sketch things out yourself. Um, I just try, tried to do this on a blank piece of paper. Um, I also keep a garden journal. I keep, I have garden journals from years to years to years. I love keeping these, but what I do is I'll take any plants I make and I put them in the journal so I know how I planned it each year. 
Um, so on this piece of paper, you can see I just roughly sketch things in. Sometimes it's difficult to get the right scale of things, but just do your best. If this isn't for you, if you are not someone who can sketch things out like this, there are also plenty of resources online where you can pay a small subscription fee and then there'll be there's a garden planner that will automatically plot your space and keep it to scale etc etc there's fancy fancy ways you can spend lots of money on planning a garden i like to keep it simple and just you sketch it out so um let's see you probably can't read anything because it's all backwards <coughs> but um this is where my compost is um, I generally always have tomatoes and peppers. I'm going to do cucumbers and what else did I do? Cucumbers and green beans over here. I am hopefully going to do some potatoes, onions, and uh, garlic, which I have never done. It's going to be my first year to plant garlic and onions. And I think we did potatoes when I had a partner. We did it. Potatoes, it was okay. Um, but we'll try again. I'm going to try again. I'm also up here. I sort of have, um, a combination. Like, so these are going to be more my summer stuff. This side, this is going to be my fall, winter. <coughs> and then these are my seasonal gardens. So usually spring stuff. So I generally do cabbage in the springtime in this bed and then kale in the fall in that bed. And then, so I just put them underneath. So it's springtime up here, fall time down here. And in this bed, it's gonna be lettuce and then bok choy. And in this bed, broccoli and then kohlrabi and radishes and eggplants and peas and more radishes. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, so that's the idea. So once you do this, you can sort of figure out what materials you're gonna need once you have this nice and planned out. When you're planning your space, it's a good time to narrow down all of those things that you wanted to eat or that you enjoy eating into the things that you think you can grow. So, um, even though I made my list of all the things that I want to eat or that I typically eat, I'm not going to grow all of this this year. Like, um, my space limits me, so I'm probably not going to grow pumpkins. Um, I don't really need to eat it. They're everywhere in the Halloween time so like I feel like growing a pumpkin is really unnecessary and not of a huge value I mainly wanted to grow a pumpkin for my daughter's sake but she's also really excited about being successfully growing a watermelon which we have not done yet we've grown Kajari melons successfully but not a typical watermelon so I really want to give her that experience and because my space is limited too I probably won't do sweet potatoes I may not even do potatoes I don't eat a ton of them I do get sweet potatoes more than I eat potatoes. Um, but I probably will do butternut squash. I found one year I had some like mammoth giant butternut squashes. I'll put a picture on this video of it. Um, would love to. I, it forced me to learn how to eat butternut squash. And ever since then I kind of like have a thing for it. Um, and I probably won't grow Swiss chard. I'll probably stick with mustard greens and kale. You know, so there's going to be some compromises, I feel like, in any garden on what you're going to do. Um, zucchini, I might not, I'm not probably going to make a space for it. I have the worst time growing zucchini. I might still, like, plan and to experiment with it and see if I can get past these bugs. But I have the worst squash bugs that ever existed. Like, I cannot keep anything alive. So, I'm probably going to mix that. I also don't really have a permanent bed I could grow asparagus in, but maybe one day, maybe I can do a smaller plot somewhere else. But right now, that's just not a priority for me. So I did have to run through and limit what and how many of these things that I typically eat um, for garden space sake. So the fifth thing you need to think about when you're planting your garden is if you're going to start your plants from seed or if you're going to use starters or some combination of the two. One reason I like to start my own seeds is because I can grow whatever the heck I want. So I can grow the varieties I want and I'm not as tied to what the stores start. So the stores that you're going to buy starters from are typically going to give you the generic, the most generic tomatoes and the, um, most sellable peppers. So they're going to give you the stuff that's palatable to the public 
and not necessarily the stuff that you want to eat. So I keep all my seeds back here actually in this thing. And um, <clears throat> so this is a good time of year where I will go and I'll tally up all the seeds that I like to, that I have. So when I'm planting them out, since I know I'm gonna grow them by seed, I'm gonna look through my seeds and go, all right, do I need to get more green beans? Or is this the variety of seed that I really wanna grow? So these guys are old homestead green beans. And I think I did, yeah, I grew these in 2021. Um, they were decent. Do I wanna grow these again? I don't know. So these are the decisions you wanna make in your, in your planning part. Um, so for instance, like this basil, I realize is too old and won't grow. Since I, as you saw, I started it in my seed tent and only the purple basil grew. So I am just gonna toss these probably. So this is sort of just what you need to do. Oh, here's something I learned too. You remember my video where I was trying to start lettuce? I've been trying to start lettuce forever. I started tried to start it outside this year two times. And then I tried to start it in my grow tent and it wouldn't work. And I learned something, a really important lesson. And here's something for you that I'll just share with you right now. So. This seed type here, this is my favorite lettuce. And lettuce seeds are typically really skinny. They're kind of like carrot seeds if you've ever seen them. Um, they're super tiny and difficult to plant. Um, usually when I do it, I just uh, spread out a whole bunch of them. Um, and I remember when I first got these seeds and I looked at them and I was like, what the heck is this? But these are pelleted seeds. So pelleted seeds are good because it gets one seed into it gets one seed into your home without difficulty so however what i did learn is that these pelleted seeds only last a year so the the downside i guess the, the point of the pellet is to make it easy to plant especially for people who farm um, but the downside is that it doesn't last but a year <coughs> so now i know why the heck my lettuce wouldn't grow that made me feel a little better. So anyways, I bought a new pack and um, I put them in the grow tent. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so good time to assess and look over the seeds if you're deciding to start from seed. It might be a good time to look through your supplies and make sure that um, you have enough pot, um, pots to plant them in. And I realized that a lot of mine got damaged because I left them outside. Um, so I may need to get more pots this year. Just something to think about. Uh, and if you can put your feelers out now, it'll be ready um, for the future. So, uh, yeah, those were my, um, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna seed start this year. And um, I do buy starters for my herbs. I have a difficult time growing a lot of some herbs. So um, I've had success growing basil and I've had su success growing basil <laughs> yeah it's pretty much it i think most everything else i've really yeah i tried to grow oregano last year and it just did not work i don't know what i'm doing wrong so i haven't figured that part out yet so until i figure it out i'm going to continue buying those plants from the store so the last thing that you'll need to do is sort of make a timeline for all of your actions so with planning out a garden it's very much like planning out a project at your job or something of that nature and if you're hearing clicky clucks it's my dog walking around on the hardwood floors um, <clears throat> but it's very much like planning a project for your job or whatever. Um, so you're, you're going to need to make a timeline of what you want to do. So the, especially when you're starting your seeds, if you're seed starting, you want to make a timeline of when you're going to plant that seed and when you're going to, like, if you're going to start that plant inside. So like generally speaking, I do my tomatoes and my peppers and my cabbage, um, and cabbage usually just a little later, but I'll do that in February, right around Valentine's day. And then, um, and then everything else I generally planned outside, at least in, at least currently. This year I might do it differently because I do plan to expand my garden. So if I'm gonna grow broccoli, I'm probably gonna start that indoors. But I'll start my radishes and my peas outdoors. Um, but cabbage and broccoli, I'm definitely gonna start indoors because it's just gonna take some time for them to grow. Um, but yeah, so that's it. And then the next really the thing you need to do after you like get a timeline for your seeds is also to 
keep in mind how you're gonna purchase or what you're gonna do if you need to add soil to your beds or you add compost, etc. So just having a working plan of when you're gonna get those. I mean, for me, I just sort of meant like give myself a general time, like, hey, by this time I need to get my compost and my topsoil in place so that I can add to my beds. So this year, hopefully I get to share with you guys how I'm gonna put in these no-dig beds and then just show you all of my options and how I'm gonna plan out this garden. Cause I really do get to start from scratch this year, which is pretty exciting. I used to have my chickens in that area and now they, I'm gonna move these chickens out. Um, well, the chickens got eaten, but I'm gonna move their coop and their space out and then use it all as garden. And then put my chickens just adjacent to it. So I still have the ability to um, easily put their compost or their waste and um, hay and materials into my compost because it has been something I've done in the past um, or to get scraps easily to it's just somewhere it's still close to the house and it's still close to the garden I just find the two things pretty adjacent like when I rip out plants and stuff from the garden I'll just throw them right in with the chickens so I'm gonna keep them close by the two seem to work very well hand in hand so I um, don't want them to be too far apart well, those are your basic steps to planting a garden. So you want, you really want to know what you're going to grow. Knowing that really helps take shape for your whole garden. Two, what are your resources? Do you have enough time, money, labor? Do you need to add additional? Maybe you should plan less because you have less of those things, etc. Three, what's the space that you're going to grow in? Container? land um do you have a lot of land do you have little land knowing that obviously is gonna super help your steps what's the method you are growing raised beds no dig no till traditional organic know your goals and five are you going to start these plants indoors by seed or are you going to go buy starters from the store just some good pointers and steps to get you rolling this year as you start to think about your garden for the spring if that's so what you want to do anyways thanks for hanging with me facts in the garden as i plan my garden and i am super excited to take you guys along as i build mine pretty much from scratch so thanks have a great afternoon and take care